Hey homies, this is Photography with Emery, and on today's show, I ain't tripping with you. I'm going to give you the lowdown on histograms. What are they, why would you use them, and what does a good or bad histogram look like? A histogram is a type of graph that displays the distribution of brightness levels in an image. The x-axis corresponds to the brightness level. Taking a common RGB image with 8 bits per channel, the values on the histogram would go from 0 to 255. The y-axis corresponds to the number of pixels in an image with particular brightness values. Looking at this example photograph and its histogram, you can see how the graph peaks on the right side as this image has a higher concentration of lighter tones. Here I've subdivided the histogram into thirds, which roughly shows where the shadow, midtones, and highlight portions of the image are represented. Going back to the example photo, you can see that there aren't a lot of pixels that fall into the shadow or mid-tone areas. Most are well within the highlight zone. Before continuing, I'd like to point out that there are different types of histograms, such as RGB, luminosity, and ones that display the data separately for each color channel. To be enlightened further about these other varieties, check out my supplemental blog post, as you'll find links to some useful resources describing these in more detail. So now you have a good overall understanding of what a histogram represents, but here are a few more good-to-know points before moving on to why they're useful and what makes a good or bad one. Using this same image and its histogram as an example, the tonal range of a photograph is usually defined as the range of tones between the darkest and lightest areas of the image. Notice how the tonal range of this photo does not extend from pure black to pure white, but instead starts from a dark gray to just off pure white. It's also valuable to identify what a low and high contrast histogram can look like. Low contrast images generally have a narrow tonal range, thus the range on such a histogram will usually be compressed together in a smaller zone. On the other hand, high contrast images generally have wide tonal ranges, and as such, the data is more spread out, as you can see in the example image on the right. Now you might have heard photographers talking about shadows or highlights being clipped. Clipping happens when the bounds have been reached in regard to what can be represented at the darkest and lightest extremes of an image. This may happen for a few reasons, but commonly the camera sensor either isn't exposed to light long enough or is overexposed, which can cause shadow or highlight clipping respectively. By the way, in case you aren't familiar with the terms, clipped highlights are also referred to as blown or blown out highlights. Also, there are data limitations to most file formats. For example, an 8-bit per channel image can clip more easily, so to speak, than a 16-bit per channel image. Fine, but what does a clipped histogram look like? On the left is a shadow clipped one and on the right is a highlight clipped one. Notice that the number of pixels at the extremes increase. The higher the values in those areas, the greater is the extent of clipping throughout an image. Let's move along and start discussing why it's useful to employ histograms during and even after shooting. Firstly, many of you might have discovered that the image shown on the camera's display is generally not as accurate as on a computer monitor. In addition, some lighting conditions, like being outdoors bathed in sunlight, can make viewing even trickier. So during shooting, the histogram can help provide clues as to whether or not the image is exposed properly or how you'd like it to be. Secondly, during post-processing of your photos in an image editor that provides a histogram, you can use it to help ensure shadows or highlights don't get clipped as you're making adjustments to bring out the best in your pics. There are also some cases where you could examine each color channel to determine if adjustments could be made to reduce color clipping. So now, here's the big question. What makes a good or bad histogram? Well, really, there's no such thing necessarily as a good or bad or right or wrong histogram. Remember, all it does is basically represent the brightness levels across an image, and that's about it. The key here is to be able to interpret what the data are presenting based on the scene you are shooting. 
For example, if you are taking a shot of a snowy landscape and you cannot clearly tell if the exposure is correct or not using the camera's display, then by viewing the histogram you might likely see that the highlights are lacking. So now you can take corrective action by overexposing the image a little to get that nice bright snow. For virtually every single photo you take, there will be a different histogram that uniquely represents each shot. On my blog post related to this video, I'll be discussing some ways you can help train yourself to better examine these graphs. So I hope you enjoyed that episode and do check out the supplemental blog post. Lots of resources there and maybe lots of extra thoughts. Facebook, Twitter links are also on the site. And this was a Q&A um, episode, kind of, sort of, I made it into a whole episode, but I had several viewers request uh, information about histograms. So feel free to make your own request as well. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and hope to see you next time. Take care. Word up.